Good morning, Crossroads. Welcome to church. Good morning. You can say hello to your neighbor. I hope you enjoyed the weekend so far. It's been a, a really warm and sunny weekend. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, and before we start worshiping, I actually would like to read a psalm for you. Uh, but first, of course, welcome to the online community as well. Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs and know that the Lord is good. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let us rise and worship our God. Worship. Good morning, Crossroads. Good morning, Crossroads. Here is such delight that you're all here and also online, Crossroads. Whether you're in Australia, Africa, 
South America, North America, Asia, welcome. So nice to connect. How wonderful to be a community together. And no matter how you feel today, no matter what kind of week you had, whether you're maybe a little disappointed in yourself, God loves you. Or maybe somebody disappointed you, God loves you. You are loved and treasured, and we're so happy to be here together. So please join me in watching the announcements. Oh, before I do that, actually, if you want to connect with one of us, please uh, let your neighbor know that you're new. We'd love to uh, chat with you or come up to the front or to the connect point where you can uh, uh, ask any questions you may have about our um, community. So please join me in watching the announcements. Hi, everyone. It's me, Beth, and I'm bringing you the announcements today. So first of all, we have Take Root is going to be on again. It's two evenings, the 15th and the 22nd, at the Community Centre. And this is perfect if you're new to Crossroads, if you have questions about what our values are, if you have questions about what church is or anything like that, this is the perfect evening for you. So come along, register online or on the website. The next announcement is about worship night. Worship nights are amazing. You do not want to miss this evening. Trust me, I was there last time and it was just so fulfilling. It's going to be on the 20th of April. Do not miss it. It's a Saturday. Bring your friends. It's the perfect night to just, you know, enjoy yourself and just to worship the Lord with all your heart. So invite people along. Have a great time. April the 20th. The next announcement is very important. We are having a clothing collection. The clothing collection is for the newest dads and it's happening on the 21st of April. So only one Sunday. So you have one chance to hand in your clothes for the newest dads. And I'm pretty sure we're all in the spring cleaning stage. You know, you're swapping around your wardrobe. You're putting the winter clothes away. You're bringing out the summer clothes. Maybe you've had a restyle since last year. It's the new you whatever it is, and then you've got some clothes that you want to give away. So give them to the newest dad. Bring them on the 21st of April. Put it in your calendar. Don't miss the one Sunday that we're doing it for spring. Next is very exciting. We have a new elder candidate, Christian. So he's going to introduce himself. Have a look at this video. Good morning, Crossroads. My name is Christian Bonfo, and I have been nominated as an elder candidate. Happy to introduce myself. I was born in Estonia, but I'm Finnish, and my lovely wife Mavis comes from Ghana and Togo. So South and North have met here in the Netherlands, and now we have two beautiful children, Christabel, who is 19 years, and Christopher, who is 12 years. Our family lives in Amsterdam. In my daily profession, I work in a financial services industry. We are part of Crossroads for almost 14 years and love it here. We uh, value the diverse international congregation, inviting time of worship, and solid biblical teaching. Might be interesting to know that missions is one of my passions. For example, with some friends, we are active with unreached people groups in parts of Asia. I believe eldership is a wonderful way to serve God, as well as the Crossroads community and beyond. And with the beyond, I mean, for example, touching the lives of the people who do not yet know Christ. I believe the Lord is calling me into the eldership ministry, and I want to follow that calling humbly and joyfully. In case you want to get to know me better, feel free to tap my shoulder. I would love to connect with you. Stay blessed. Thank you so much, Christian, for your video. It's really cool to get to know you a little bit better. And if any of you in the congregation have any thoughts or questions about what you just heard, then please feel free to contact elderselection at xrds.nl. Send a little email there. If you see Christian around, go tap him on the shoulder, introduce yourself. He's really friendly, and I'm sure he would love to get to know you better as well. And after the service, remember it's the lunch table today. Yay! So go get some yummy food. And I know your tummies are going to be rumbling because I normally hear them during the sermon. So after today, after church, you can go to the community center and get some really yummy food. So don't forget and have an amazing service. So when I um, 
rode my bike this morning, I saw the sunrise. Um, and it was beautiful. I saw the skies, I saw the different colors, um, and it was nice and warm already, and it really made my heart sing. And yeah, if we think about God, how He created everything, how He created the earth, um, the stars, the moon, everything that is around us, but He also created us, we can be so thankful. And whoa, there's so much power in God's name, and He just speaks, and there's something how He creates. And I was just uh, amazed about it. Uh, and that often happens when I'm on my bicycle in the morning. Um, yeah, I just wanted to share um, this with you because, um, yeah, our God is so great and He's so good. He's faithful. And there's power in Him and there's power in His name. And we will sing about His name and we will glorify Him. So let us rise and do that. As morning dawns and evening fades, you inspire songs of praise that arise from earth to touch your heart and glorify your name. Your name is a strong and mighty tower. Your a shelter like no other your name let the nation sing it louder cause nothing has the power to save but your name a strong and mighty tower and in your name Lord we are safe and not only because what you have done for us Lord Jesus but for who you are Lord 
we want to bring you worship. We want to praise you. And we want to glorify your name. Thank you, Jesus.
not centered around Jesus. And this is why we sing this song. It's not a, just a song. It's really telling God that you want Him on the first place. That you want Him at the throne of your heart. And Jesus, here we are. We're singing this to you.
Yes, and so, Lord, as we, as we gather here today, your church, your people, we are grateful for this incredible opportunity that we have. Lord, for us, it is, it is just our highest calling, something we cannot even articulate, to be in your presence as deep, connects with our eternal God, our creator, that recognizing who you are and who we are and that relationship, it is our highest calling to worship you. It just makes sense. It brings a peace, a fulfillment, a joy that nothing else can give. For we were created to worship you. And so to be able to do that on a Sunday morning is the highlight of our week. It sets us up for Monday and Tuesday and the rest of the week. And so thank you for this moment of worship. Lord, thank you for every person here pray that that you will meet with every person irrespective of their place of need where they find themselves in life reveal yourself to them may they come to know you lover of their soul pray it in Jesus name Amen Amen. Good morning, everybody. Uh, so as you can hear, after Easter, I lost my voice again. So that's the second time in a month. I'm not sick at all. So don't worry, I'm not sick. I just, I don't know what's up with my voice. It just keeps disappearing. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what you're all thinking. Paul, just talk less. Well, <laughs> easier said than done. <laughs> so we're going to try our best. Listen, friends, we're going to start a new sermon series that I'm really excited about, and it makes sense that we as, as God's children, as, as followers of Jesus, uh, take time to just hold this before ourselves, to remind ourselves of the things we're going to be talking about in the next five weeks that make sense coming out of Easter. But before I do that, um, I need to give you a bit of an update. Uh, our church community uh, suffered a bit of a blow this weekend. Uh, so on Friday night, uh, okay, so let me just, so you will know that we have a truck, a crossroads church truck uh, that transports every week from our offices, from our community center, all the stuff you see here uh, to the church. We transform this church hall every week so that we can worship God together here. So on Friday night, our truck was stolen from outside of our offices. And so, but wait, it gets more crazy than that. So our truck gets stolen. Uh, Nicole uh, gets a phone call. Um, incredible police detective work to find Nicole's number. I don't know how they did that. I mean, that's the most impressive thing is finding Nicole's number. Well done, Dutch police, for figuring that out, right? So Nicole gets a phone call to say, listen, um, your truck's gone because, of course, the truck was loaded with all our stuff for Sunday. Your, your beloved coffee machine, the stuff for Sunday school, checking your children in, all the stuff. So we get a phone call, say, listen, it was dumped on the side of, in an arbitrary field near Germany somewhere, I think. So there's all our stuff. Some farmer lady was waiting there. Johan and Nicole got hired a new truck and, and Alistair drove and there's our stuff and some arbitrary field in the middle of nowhere. Okay, look at that. I mean, that's ridiculous, right? So loaded up our stuff. Have you got the one of the coffee machine? I love how the coffee machine just stands in the middle of a field. <laughs> it's incredible. Anyway, so loaded it up. Some of our stuff was stolen, like computers and laptops and so on and so on. 
and all this stuff to check in your children. So we've got to do it by hand. So please be patient with us. But I just firstly want to say a massive thank you to Nicole and Johan and Alistair and the team. So, so, the fact, so the fact that we can be here and have church still, and, and I think you can still have coffee. Something broke on the machine, but I think it still works. So hopefully you can get coffee. Uh, but of course, the truck's gone. The truck's gone. So all I'm saying is just beware Yohan is looking this week, figuring out how our insurance works, but there might be a chance we'd ha we might have to do some fundraising because we need a new truck. So uh, just be aware that that's, um, that's where we're at. Uh, so we, we, we thank God that we, we got some of our stuff back. So please just be patient with us. What a crazy thing to happen, right? Anyway, our new sermon series. Friends, we've just come last weekend. We've just come from Easter weekend. This, what seems to be this universal long weekend, holiday, celebrated around the world. But for us as believers, as followers of Jesus, it is not just a weekend off or a long weekend. Easter weekend is the most important weekend in our lives. It is where we remember on Friday what Jesus did for us on the cross. How by his sacrifice and his blood made new life and forgiveness and reconciliation with our God possible. And then on Sunday, we remember on Resurrection Sunday that Jesus is alive. And because he's alive, I mean, that just changes things dramatically. It means we can be in a relationship with him. We can talk to him and he knows us and he hears us and he's aware about our lives and he cares about what's going on in our lives. And so we see for centuries our God, the risen, alive Jesus, victorious Jesus, has changed lives down the centuries. And the fact that we are here today is proof and testimony of how God continues to change his lives. And if you have experienced God changing your life, there's just no going back. There's just nothing that can compare to God opening our eyes and, and just recognizing and being in a relationship with Him. And so we talked about Easter Sunday, how the risen Christ gives us uh, a new purpose, a new understanding of who we are and why we're alive. And so we have this new meaning and new purpose and new message. Not just that, we have a new family, a new community, the believers of Christ, the church. We have a new hope, a new beginning, a new present, a new ending, all in Christ. So from there, it's appropriate then that you and I ask the question as we are challenged to live this, this new this resurrection life, how do we do that practically? How does that look in our lives? And so starting today, for the next five weeks, I want to ask and answer the question. And I want us to talk about stuff that you and I know we're aware of, but I think it's my duty as your pastor to remind you of these things, to hold it up before you, to say, hey, can I just, can I just remind you about a few things? Some practical ways that you and I can practically live out this resurrection life, some, some disciplines that you and I need to nurture in our lives so that we can, in keeping with our theme, you remember from February, that you and I can grow. What are some practical disciplines that you and I need to nurture? And I'm going to share five with you over the next few weeks, but I want to say to you what makes these five disciplines so special is that Jesus himself lived and practiced these disciplines. And so if they were good enough for Jesus, I think they're good enough for us. And so we're going to start with it. Let me just run them through for you. Today we're going to start with the discipline of worship. We're going to talk about worship. Next week we're going to talk about practicing uh, justice and righteousness and kindness. In other words, serving, the discipline of serving. 
Then week three, we're going to talk about growing through the discipline of studying the Bible, studying God's Word. Then the discipline of being a witness, sharing our faith. And then finally, the discipline of living a generous and grateful life, the discipline of giving of ourselves for the sake of others. And so these five disciplines, there's one obvious one that's missing. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Prayer. Prayer we're going to handle separately. Okay? So don't worry about prayer. It's there. We're going to deal with prayer separately. But these five disciplines we see in the life of Jesus. And I want to say to you, I want to remind you, I want to ask you, how is it going with those five disciplines in your life? So we're almost halfway in the year. At the start of the year, we said, this year we want to be intentional with our spiritual growth and development. Be intentional about working out your spiritual growth plan. These five disciplines are key and instrumental in facilitating that growth. And so how are you doing with that? How is it going with nurturing those disciplines in your life? Today, we're going to start with the discipline of worship. So I want to just be very specific when I talk about worship. Worship, all those five things that I spoke about, serving, Bible study, gave, all that things, that's all worship, right? It's all part of our worship. But I want to kind of focus it in and get really focused. And so when I talk about worship, I want to talk about this discipline of gathering with other believers to honor God. The thing we're doing today. I want to encourage us about the discipline of this, of doing this, of making this moment in your week a top number one priority to start your week. Gathering with other believers to honor and worship God. And so that's how I'm going to focus on worship today. I want to start by reading Psalm 95 from the Bible. Psalm 95, uh, verses 1 to 7. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise, for the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In His hands are the depths of the earth, the heights of the mountains are also His. The sea is His, for He made it, and the hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today I want to hold before us and encourage us all to nurture the spiritual discipline of corporate and private worship. To make it a priority in our lives. Now, friends, if you know me in the context of Psalm 95, if you know me, you will know that I love nature, uh, all of it, the beach, the mountains, the forest, the deserts, all of it. But what you will also know about me is that in particular, and I'm sorry to discriminate against nature, but above all, I love the African bush and the animals that live in the African bush. And especially a couple of years ago, I had this incredible privilege to, to, for, to take a couple of months out and to do this, this wildlife uh, guiding course. And I just again came to the realization, just nature is just incredible. It is magnificent. And then I reflected and I thought to myself, but listen, if God created, so, so God created the earth, right? And if he wanted to, he could have made it really dull and boring. I mean, there's no need for him to have made it so absolutely stunning. Can you imagine if it was just gray and blah? <laughs> but he didn't. 
Have you ever seen an African sunset? Well, good. <laughs> God made it spectacular, and I wonder why. And I, I think part of God making creation so spectacular and complex, I think it is an expression of God's love for you and me. It is part of God saying, I love you so much. I want you to enjoy life. I want to enjoy being here. I want you to have adventures here. And so I'm not going to just give you a dull, boring environment. I'm going to create this most beautiful place for you to live. It's an expression of God's love for us. And then I reflect and I think about the people in my life. I think about my incredible wife that I've been married to for 30 years this year, right? Just sharing my life with her and my two amazing children, the people that God bring into our lives. I think it's an expression of God's love for us, giving us people around us to enjoy and to celebrate and to love being alive with. God's saying, I love you. Then let's not even begin to talk about what we celebrated last weekend, Easter. Saying, expressing my love for you, I give you my son. I hold nothing back as I give to you. The question then becomes, in the context of all of this, God's giving and expressing of his love for us, what then becomes the appropriate response? What do we do with that? How do we respond? I want to say to you this morning that I believe part of the answer to that question, an appropriate and right response to all that God has done and given for us, is worship. An appropriate and right response is you and I acknowledging, recognizing God and who God is, Recognizing who we are in relation to God. Recognizing that God is God and I am not. And saying, I love you. Thank you for who you are. For changing my life and all that you've done. I recognize you. I acknowledge you for who you are. And therefore, I want to, with all that I am, ascribe you value and worth. I ascribe value and worth. I give thanks to you by loving you with all that I am, by loving your creation and loving the people around me, by surrendering and submitting to your rule and reign in my life. Worship, giving thanks to God. So by the way, you know that it's not happiness that makes us grateful, right? but it's gratefulness that makes us happy. And worship is an expression of that gratefulness, of that gratitude to our creator, to our God, and leads to true happiness. Worship, my dear friends, is an essential part, an essential Christian discipline that you and I need if we are to grow in our walk with God. It should be a priority. We see it right throughout Scripture. We see Jesus practicing it, and we see the practice of worship right throughout the centuries. It has formed the, the heart and the foundation of followers of Christ down the ages. God is worthy of our worship. You and I were created to worship. couple of definitions for you about worship. Here's, a few, but here's the first one. Worship is the continuous outpouring of all that I am, all that I do, all that I can ever become in light of a chosen or choosing God. Another definition. Worship is communion with God in which believers by grace center their mind's attention and heart's affection on the Lord, humbly glorifying God in response to His greatness and His word. 
final definition of worship for you. The inner essence of worship is to know God truly and then respond with thanksgiving from the heart that that knowledge by <clears throat> from the heart to the knowledge by valuing God treasuring God prizing God enjoying God being satisfied with God above all earthly things and then that deep restful joyful satisfaction in God overflows in demonstrable acts of praise from the lips and demonstrable acts of love in serving others for the sake of Christ. Worship. I think everything that God makes displays His glory. And nature itself cannot help but worship God. The birds can't help but sing. The stars can't help but shine. Have you seen an African sunset, I already asked. Cannot help but give glory to God. As we look at people and how diverse and beautiful and amazing we are, I think what God has created reflects God's glory. But you and I, what sets us apart is you and I have a choice. And it's to this choice that I appeal to you today. As nature cannot help but give glory to God. You and I get to choose whether or not we will worship our God. The earliest expressions of worship we see about worship right throughout Scripture, we read in Genesis chapter 4. Right at the beginning of the Bible, we read about worship. And it usually was this idea of the, the bringing of a sacrifice or an offering from one's crop or one's flock as an expression of gratitude, as an expression of love for God. I think it's similar what we read early in the Bible, people bringing gifts and offerings to express their gratitude as an act of worship. It's similar to why you and I give one another gifts when it's birthdays or whenever. Uh, we, we don't give one another gifts, well, mostly, not because we want something from that person, but we give one another gifts to say I love you, to express our affection and what you mean to us. That's why we give gifts. And in a similar sense, our worship is bringing God the gift of our lives, of our song, of our hearts, meditation, of our mind, of our thoughts. It is a gift. It is an offering we bring, a gift we give, give to God, given not to persuade God to do something for us. No but as an expression of our love and our gratitude for God. It is a gift we bring. In the New Testament, there are really three words, three words, three Greek words that we can associate with this idea of worshiping God. The first one is the word proskuneo. I've put it up there for you. Proskuneo is an interesting word. And what it means is it's this idea to, to bow down in recognition of uh, being in the presence of somebody greater than yourself, this idea of um, bowing down. Interesting, those of you who have dogs might, might find this interesting. Uh, the idea, you know when you've been away for a while and you get back home and your dog is all excited to see you, jumping up and down, running around, wagging tail, so by the way, can you ever imagine a cat doing that? <laughs> no, right? But a dog doing that. So that idea of like, but this dog is so excited to see that word. So when dogs do that, it's called proskuneo. Interesting. So the next time, so when you get home today and your dog's all excited to see you, that's proskuneo. So this idea of, of just, I'm, I'm, I'm in the presence of something greater than I, this, this joy, this excitement. And so when we think about worship and trying to understand it from God's word, we, we must connect worship to, to joy and excitement, this bowing down. The second word connected to uh, the idea of worship in the Bible is the word sebumai. Sebumai is the understanding that is approaching, again, coming to someone greater than what I am with a deep sense of reverence and respect. 
So when we understand worship, we approach it with joy and excitement. God, I'm glad to be in your presence. You know, jumping up and down a little bit, you know. I'm so pleased to be with you. But it also comes with a sense of an attitude of respect and reverence. Sebomai. Because I'm standing in the presence of somebody worthy. Somebody great. And then the final one is the word letreo. And the idea there is the treo. It is because I am in the presence of someone great, I want to surrender. I want to serve. So this idea of servanthood, of giving of myself. And so from the New Testament, very briefly, we understand worship. And we, and we bring into the ideas of joy and excitement, yet with reverence and respect. And at the very same time, a surrendering of myself, a saying, God, here I am. I give you who I am. I want to serve you. I bring my life to you as a gift, as an offering. My talents, my intellect, my emotions, my resources, my all in acknowledgement of who you are and what you've done for me, I surrender and I seek to serve you. The English word worship comes from the old English word, worth-ship. And so when we worship, we are saying, you are worthy, God, of my joy, of my excitement. You are worthy of my respect. You are worthy of my life, of my service. So as we read the New Testament, the book of Acts, the epistles, we get to form a picture of what those early believers in Jesus did when they worshipped. Made a little bit of a list. Let me read it for you. They prayed together with one another, giving thanks to God. So prayer is an important part of worship. They sang psalms and hymns and spiritual songs together to God. So singing. They broke bread together, sharing the Lord's Supper as a way of communing with God and with one another. So they prayed, they sang, they broke bread together. They confessed their sins to God and to one another. They reflected on Scripture together. So they studied God's Word together. They encouraged one another, spurring one another on to this life of love and faithfulness and service. They collected an offering, expressing their love and gratitude with, to God, seeking to grow God's community to build God's kingdom. They prayed, they sang, they broke bread, they confessed their sins, they reflected on scripture, they encouraged one another, they collected an offering. Do any of those things sound familiar to you? It's what we do together here on a Sunday. That's why we do these things. It's not that we, somebody just sat down, ooh, I wonder what should we do on a Sunday morning? It's God's followers have been doing this as an expression, as a way of worshiping God. And that's why in the year 2024, we, God's children, continue to do the same to this day. I want you to notice something, however, as a word of reminder and caution to us all, as an encouragement, as a challenge to us all, I want you to notice about those things. Worship was not something that they attended. It was not something they watched. It was not something that they observed, if, I, if you remember that list that I just gave you. Not something they watched or observed. It was something they did. It was something they brought. It was something they participated in. And so here's the thing. When you and I gather for worship, we gather not for a show. We gather not with the heart's attitude of, what am I going to get out of it today? I gather because what am I going to give to God today? And so I remember when I gather in this place that when we gather, you and I are not the audience. 
right? God is the audience. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is the audience, not you. You and I gather to bring, to enjoy an excitement in reverence and respect, to surrender and to serve, to bring our lives, our voices, our presence as a gift to the one who created us and loves us like no other. I come to bring <coughs> primarily not to get. So I begin to, to wrap things up for us. There, the, but there is two important components to worship. Speaking about worship in the way that we've focused ourselves to talk about it today. That I want to just remind us of. We know this, but just so that you know. As we read the Psalms, we discover, for example, Psalm 23. We have what we call the I Psalms. Psalm 23 is an example of that. For the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down. Right? But then we also have what we call the we Psalms. And Psalm 95 that I read for us is an example of that. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us bow down before our God. And so it reminds us of these two uh, very important components to worshiping our God. There is the personal and there is the corporate. And so I encourage you as we talk about spiritual disciplines for our growth and development, how is your personal worship of God going? Don't neglect that personal. Are you taking the time to worship God in your personal capacity. How do you start your day? How do you end your day? Do, we, do you incorporate the worship of God in your day-to-day -day existence? You as a person. I encourage you to nurture your personal worship of God. It is vital to your growth. But then there is the corporate aspect, the together part, the things we do together. And so what we've done is, as a community, we've set a day aside. So Jewish people, for example, um, have chosen the Sabbath. And, it, and the symbolism of that, it is when God uh, rested from creation, right? They've set that day aside. We as Christians, as New Testament followers and believers of Jesus Christ, have set a Sunday aside. Why? The symbolism of that is it's the day that Jesus rose from the dead. So by the way, you know what that means, right? It means that every single Sunday then, should be a mini celebration of Easter. Should be a mini Easter every Sunday. And so we've set a day aside. In the week, we've set, we've set an hour or two aside on that day. Where we've said we want to come together as followers of Jesus to worship Him. Do not neglect this spiritual discipline. Make it a top priority. Let your children see and know this is what we do as a family. This is important to us. And explain to them why it is important. Why do we do this? Explain to them what, about worship and what worship is and, and why does it we do the things that we do on a Sunday. There's just something beautiful that happens when we gather together like this that doesn't happen when we're on our own worshiping God. This beautiful uh, thing happens where uh, the Bible tells us that when we gather together in his name, Jesus is there. And so lives are transformed. This, this exchange takes place when we gather like this. We, we bring and we offer our worship, ascribing value and worth and acknowledging God for who he is and the role that he plays in our lives. And as we offer this to God, God, by His Holy Spirit, hears us and encourages us and challenges us and transforms us and changes us as we dwell together and encourage one another. This beautiful transformation takes place in our lives. There is one final thing I want to share with you, one final aspect of our corporate worship. So there's the Sunday morning. Let's never give up the habit of meeting together. But then there's another aspect of corporate worship, and we call it our life groups. So it's still in a group, 
but it's a slightly smaller group where we get to, to worship God together. We break bread and we study scripture. We pray together. We do all those things that we read in the New Testament, but we do it in a setting that's more interactive, where, where we get to ask, where we get to discuss, where we get to hear from one another, where we support one another. And this is our Life Group Month. Uh, we're launching our Life Group Month. For this month, we are putting the emphasis on our life groups. As part of our spiritual disciplines, we want to say to you that we believe God has given us this vehicle of small groups, what we call our life groups, as, as a vehicle, as soil, where we can grow and practice our spiritual disciplines, truly become a follower, not just a fan, of Jesus. We took some of our cameras with us to one of our life groups. We've got, we've got 45 life groups, 45 active life groups in our church. And the encouragement during this month, you're going to hear a lot about life groups. We encourage you, if you're not in a life group, be part of one. If you don't know how, go and speak to the people at the Connect Point. If you want to start a new life group, speak to somebody at the Connect Point. If you've got questions about life groups, speak to somebody at at the Connect Point. We took our cameras along to one of our life groups and we made a little video for you. Have a look at this. part of the Ellesmere Life Group. We are a group of five families that meet once every two weeks on a Wednesday. Range of ages, some have small kids, some have big kids. Uh, we happen to all come from South Africa and we live in Ellesmere. So our typical Wednesday night starts at about half past six. We alternate houses in terms of who hosts. So every second week, someone else opens their home, they make dinner, we all arrive, share a meal together. Uh, fellowship and discuss the week's events and then we either do a study a Bible study it's an opportunity to learn together um, ask questions share input things that we probably couldn't do on a Sunday um, and then close the evening off with sharing prayer requests for the week a cup of coffee and that's about it um, we have come to the country and we sort of here with no support system and I think that's really important for us as a family but for me as well personally to just have that support system um, you know people you can talk to people, people you, you can sort of offload and, and bring your troubles but even your highs and lows each week and I, I think that's that's a, that's a big thing to us it's important for us to grow as well spiritually but not just individually but as a group share ideas, you know, speak about the Bible, learn new things, bounce ideas off of each other. And I think that's, that's also you know, important to, uh, to not just have your own view, but also consider the views of others. There's that authenticity in doing life together. You know, coming together, some weeks, lots of positive celebrations, great things, other weeks, harder, tougher times. And each of us are are doing that part, that life together, and you end up being more vulnerable. And therefore, in your vulnerability, you also grow. And you grow as a Christian, as a wife, as a mum, in, in so many areas of your life. Just put yourself out there. You don't, you'll never know until you try. Different groups will have environments and different ways of, of, of being together. And finding your place in a group can be so enriching that yeah, I would definitely encourage people to, to do it. Join the Life Group! Guess uh, what Life Group I'm in. <laughs> so, friends, the, the, the challenge and the encouragement, what I hold before us today as a, as a faith community, as your pastor, is spiritual discipline number one. Let's not neglect our personal worship, 
to our creator, but also our corporate, our Sunday mornings, and then in midweek uh, with a smaller group. If you want to know about life groups, we invite you to our connect point, and they are ready to answer your questions. Let us pray. Lord, it is for us a privilege and a real joy to worship you. Ascribing value, recognizing, acknowledging who you are, who we are, and who we can be in, through, and because of you. And to every week to be able to come together with family, with friends, to express that through, through our songs, through looking at your word, through our prayers, through having communion together, drinking coffee together, fellowship together, to be able to do that is a privilege for us. May we prioritize and nurture the spiritual discipline of both private and corporate worship as a way of living practically the resurrection life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you, friends. Thank you, Paul, for this powerful message. And um, yeah, we can be very grateful for our community, right? Amen. So let's rise and worship.
We are so grateful for all God has done. So um, let us in our worship also give back to God, give back with our time, with our finances. So diff there are different ways to give. As we know, there's the gift app, there's the um, Tiki, but also our preferred way is via the bank at a regular basis. That way we know what uh, budgeting is just a lot easier that way. In a minute, I'll pray for that um, together with you. Um, but also just a reminder to, after the service, uh, find out at the Connect Point all about uh, life groups if you aren't already part of a life group or about serving in general uh, here in, the, in this community. If you, those people who are radiant are usually the ones who are uh, involved. So uh, get involved, I would say. So first I will lead in prayer and after that we'll bless each other. Gracious Father, we are so grateful for being part of a community. And we're, above all things, so grateful for the fact that you died for us. And as we consider, Lord, the spiritual disciplines and consider the discipline of worship, Lord, certainly part of it is giving, giving back to you in our time and in our finances. And we ask, Lord, a blessing over all of our leaders, the staff, our precious pastors and their families, Lord, our precious elders and their families and loved ones, and we pray a blessing over them in general. Bless them abundantly, but also bless them as they lead us and as they decide on how we invest in this community of our time and of our assets and of our finances. And Father, as we respond to this beautiful sermon today, Lord, we ask, I ask, Lord, that you would put a deep desire in our hearts, Lord. Give us an urge by your Holy Spirit. Would you give us all an urge to worship you, a deep longing to worship you? Lord, instead of gritting our teeth and saying we have to be disciplined, Lord, would you come with your Holy Spirit? Also, all of, us, all of our community members who are watching from other continents even, come with your Holy Spirit and give us a longing to maybe get up really early in the morning and to spend time with you, to listen to sermons, to listen, to put on Bible verses read to us on YouTube, to listen, listen to worship or to sing out loud to you. Would you give us an urge and a longing that this would be such a basic part of our daily life, we pray. We want to be so deeply in relationship with you. May we be so deeply involved with you, Lord. May it be all about relationship, love, and daily choices as we live with you. Bless us as a community and bless us as individuals, I pray in Jesus' name. So fellow crossroaders, please hold hands, bless each other as we pray this beautiful prayer of blessing upon each other. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace.